another thing you talk about this uh, this idea of what you call self sealing systems. Mm-hmm. Uh, how does that work? Can you describe how that would have worked? Let's say in the case of a Nexium type of cult, what exactly is that about? Well, this what what I describe as the self sealing system is essentially this this world that's closed in on itself. You know that you're part of this uh, altered reality. Mm-hmm. So you've got. First of all, of course, you've got the leader who uh, demands all devotion and all loyalty, no matter what, and demands, you know, blind followership, in essence. Then you have the indoctrination program, uh, which is is actually, in a way, part of that belief system that um, you're you're being told by the leader that that he or she can take you to some, you know, salvation, whatever that might be, whether it's mm-hmm. political or financial or weight loss or whatever, right? But they're the only one who can take you there. But in order to go there, you have to change, you have to transform yourself. And so that's what the indoctrination program is all about, is getting you to change. So you have those two things coupled with then within the system of the cult, you have what I call systems of influence and systems of control. And these are mechanisms and, or, or techniques that interlock, you know, so the controls are the more overt rules and regulations, things you have to abide by, you know, whether it's how you dress or how many babies to have or whatever. But the influences are actually, in many ways, the much more powerful ones that lock you in. You know, that's where we see the, the importance of peer pressure, which I think isn't really talked about enough. Um, because we respond to our peers almost more than anything else, right? So that's why these these gr- cults are groups, right? Because it's the peer pressure that that helps keep people in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so all of those other um, psychological or social social psychological influences, the fear, the guilt, the shame, the you know all of those things. So all you've got these four components that lock together that create this self-sealing system and of course we you know we saw that very well with 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 nexium you've got ranieri the leader who demands mm-hmm. everything you have the belief system that he's the only one who can bring you this enlightenment right and then you had the various ways that they were controlled and influenced um so and once you're caught up in that it, it's it's really difficult uh, for people to leave or think even think about leaving you get to the point where you can't even imagine life outside the group mm-hmm. Well, and again, there's another parallel I think in what you just described between Nexium and Scientology Isn't there is part of the self sealing system where a person who does leave is shunned or labeled a suppressive person or whatever you want to call that person and right. then in the case of both cults they've spent huge sums of money going after these people, which, I mean, Scientology is infamous for doing that dirty tricks and all the rest of it. And so did Nexium. And they would go after journalists and bloggers and reporters, anyone who spoke bad about the group, they would sick their attorneys on them and investigate them. And so you see that they're, and people inside the group must be thinking, I certainly don't want to leave this thing. If that's the example, that must be part of the ceiling of the system, isn't it? Exactly. It's the fear. I mean, it's the Mm -hmm. fear of what's going to happen if i go out there into the into the quote regular world right i mean it's 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 the fear of of that like what what the cult could bring upon you and it's also the fear of like well maybe i'm wrong you know why am i the only one thinking this i better stay here because this is safe and this is what i know Mm -hmm. you know god knows what what can happen to me out there you know so yeah, that that's definitely part of of what keeps people closed in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the shunning or what Lipton calls the dispensing of existence. You exactly. leave the group and you're a non-person exactly. now. Exactly. We will never speak to you again. We will cut you off and yeah. perhaps yeah. pursue legal you know avenues against you. And you already can't afford it because you don't have any money anyway. <laughs> that's any part money. of the and, thing, and, isn't it? And you, and you may not know you have a support system. I mean, but mm-hmm. usually after a, a period of time in a group, you you don't have any friends left who aren't part of the group. And you mm-hmm. may have cut off your family. You know, in my case, when I was in my group, you know, both my parents died while I was in the group. I had no other friends who were, and I was like, well, where where in the world am I going to go? You know, what mm-hmm. what can I do? I didn't have any money. I didn't have a car that I thought would go 10 miles, you know? So it, it, 
all of those things are factors in, in um, keeping people kind of paralyzed, mm -hmm. you know, it, sort of psychologically paralyzed, un mm -hmm. unable to go through that door. And you become so dependent in a case, even financially, right. as you say, on the cult. If you're working 24-7 almost, you're, right. they're working you to death, literally, to keep yeah. you so busy, keep you so exhausted, which is another right. classic cult tactic, yeah. isn't it? Then you can't think, yeah. You're no near time exhausted. to think. You can't think straight, exactly. Yeah, so you're financially yeah. dependent, you're emotionally dependent. If you right. do think of leaving, where are you going to go? You've got no resources, you have no career you might not have any marketable skills to get a job. What are you going to do? As you, so it's better to just stay in the self-sealing system. Right. Yet it's wearing you down. It, it's got to contribute to mental health disorders yeah. of every stripe. Right. You know, oh, surely. I, mean, Would you, I can say from my own experience, I, for the last five years of, of my time in my group, I was, um, I used to wish every day that I would get killed in a car accident because I couldn't figure out how to leave. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I, I, I didn't think I should commit suicide. I guess that was just a no-no for me. And I, I literally every day would wish I would just get killed in a car accident because it was the only way I could see to get out. So you can imagine, you know, you've got thousands of people around the country, around the world who are in cults, who are, who are probably also in that frame of mind where, where you just feel lost and desperate.